everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You, and a lot of you have been asking me to do this video. So here it is, the ultimate battle tower guide for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. If you're pumped for this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And without further ado, let's get on into the video. For this video, I teamed up with Moxie Boosted, who does battling on the daily on a competitive level to help put this guide together for you guys for singles and doubles when it comes to the battle tower. Before we get into the battle tower, I'm gonna explain a few basics that you guys need to know for those who have no idea about the battle tower. First, you're going to have to get to it, which is located in the fight area. This is post game for anyone wanting to know, so you have to beat the champion and then take a boat from Snowpoint City to go over here. Once you arrive in the fight area, make sure to go all the way to the right, and go up this pathway right here. Once out here, you'll be in the battle park. Now, before we go to the battle tower, since we are already on the way there, this building is where you're going to come in and turn in your battle points you get from the battle tower. The lady on the left over here is going to be exchanging items for you, like ability patches, which give you hidden ability. Check out that video. Uh, a lot of EV training items. You should also check out that video and power ankles and berries and a lot of other stuff that you can use in your battles. The lady on the right desk is going to have access to a bunch of cool TMs that you can have on your Pokemon. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to save up battle points for what you want. So make sure you know what you want to grind for before actually doing it. That way you have a goal in mind when you're in the battle tower. Now, after seeing that, just go further up north into these doors and you're gonna be at the battle tower itself. The lady on the far left will tell you that what the battle tower is, nothing special here. The lady in the center is going to give the options of singles or doubles when you do the battle room challenge. And if you hit, I want a battle, you need to do singles or doubles here. The lady on the right will be responsible for master class battles. You cannot even have access to this until you have completed 49 battles in a row, which is basically seven sets. And each of those sets will contain seven trainers. That means if you lose one battle, you're gonna have to start all over again. Now you can bring every single Pokemon into the battle tower except for these ones on screen. These specific legendaries you cannot bring in, but you can bring in Pokemon such as Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres, Entei, Suicune, Raikou, and legendaries such as Heatran and Cresselia. So you can do some battling in there with these legendaries. Now that we got all the basics out the way, I'm gonna turn this over to Moxie Boosted. What's up everybody, my name is Marcos, and I wanna thank Philly for letting me help out with this video. I'm someone who plays a lot of competitive Pokemon, and I'm known for my creative team building within the VGC community. That being said, when we're playing Battle Tower, we're gonna face a lot of cheese. Whether it be evasion, sleep, paralysis, or anything RNG related, the game will not hesitate to throw that at you. Because of that, we're gonna throw a lot of the gimmicks out the window and we're going to end up going with something very reliable to make sure you can grind for BP with as little hassle as possible. Starting off with the Battle Tower singles team, we have a team composed of Garchomp, Azumarill, Clefable, Breloom, Heatran, and Gengar. Something to note is while Battle Tower singles only requires you to pick three Pokemon, I have made a full team of six. This is just so you can have a little bit more fun and flexibility when you're trying to pick a team to grind for BP. Now that being said, the three Pokemon that I would usually pick if you want a reliable team for grinding for BP are going to be Azumarill, Heatran, and Garchomp. They typically have a lot of options when it comes to switching in for each other, and as a core, they just tend to do a lot of damage and just synergize very well. So the first Pokemon we're going to talk about is the Garchomp. It's funny that we're talking about it first, because typically you'll want to bring it in the back. Garchomp is very fast and very strong, with this Choice Scarf, Max Speed, Max Attack set, an Outrage, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Poison Jab, it's got a lot of coverage and options for hitting things. Usually what you'll want to do though, is bring something else in the front and let it do the majority of the heavy lifting. If it happens to go down, you can go ahead and switch in your Garchomp to clean up whatever's left on the field by locking into Outrage, Earthquake, or any other move really, but Outrage and Earthquake are going to be its bread and butter, given their high power because of the same type attack bonus. Next up, we have Azumarill. Azumarill is a very bulky and powerful water type. While it does have a very low attack stat at 50, what we can do is give it the ability Huge Power, which doubles its attack stat, give it a Citrus Berry to hold onto, and let it click Belly Drum, allowing it to maximize its attack stat while having its HP, thus activating the Citrus Berry and allowing it to sweep. This is actually a very good Pokemon to lead off with in many games in the Battle Tower, because it's relatively easy just to click Belly Drum and then sweep the rest of the team with Waterfall, Play Rough, and usually Aqua Jet. The EV spread we're running is 244 HP, 252 attack, and 12 speed. Now the reason we run 244 HP is because if you run 252, you're left with a 207 HP stat. 
This will actually make it so when you belly drum, the citrus berry won't activate since the game believes you're at 51% health. The remaining 12 EVs are put into speed strictly because if you end up running against another Pokemon with 50 speed or higher, you actually have a solid chance of outspeeding them then and be able to hit them with a more powerful move than Aqua Jet like Waterfall or Play Rough. Our next Pokemon is Clefable, and I consider this to be a defensive switch in for the team. However, we're not committing too much to the defensive nature of this Pokemon, as we want to make sure it's able to dish out damage as well. We're running a set with max HP, max special attack, and 4 defense, with the ability Unaware and Leftovers. Unaware makes it so if the opposing Pokemon decides to set up on you, say you face an opposing Azumarill in the battle tower, and they max out their attack stat, Clefable will just pretty much act like it hasn't noticed that the attack set's been raised at all, allowing it to take the hit pretty reliably. Our moveset is Moonblast, Moonlight, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower, being basically just a coverage monster for the whole team. The next Pokemon is a personal favorite of mine on the team. This is a very fun Pokemon to run if you want to get more creative with how you're grinding for BP. It's a Toxic Orb Poison Heal Breloom. Our moveset is Spore, Substitute, Focus Punch, and Seed Bomb. We're running 4 HP, 252 attack, and 252 speed with a jolly nature. Typically what you will do is lead off with this Pokemon, go for a Spore to put the opponent to sleep, and use that free turn to set up a substitute. Your Toxigore will let you heal 1 8th of your health at each turn, meaning that after 2 turns of Poison Heal, you'll actually end up with the exact health that you use on your substitute. Behind that substitute, you're free to click whatever move you want, but you'll especially want to click Focus Punch since it's 150 base power, and coming off of a high attack set like Breloom, you're guaranteed to one-shot quite a few Pokemon. This is one of my favorites on the team, and I really hope you enjoy using it. Next up on the team, we have Heatran. This is going to be the backbone of our team when it comes to a powerful, bulky special attacker. Being a Steel and Fire type, we actually want to be careful when it comes to ground moves since they can easily one-shot us. That's why we're running a Shookaberry and maxing out our HP stat. Our moveset is Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and Dark Pulse, and our ability is Flash Fire to make sure we can switch in on Fire-type moves, whether it be for Breloom or anything else on the rest of our team. Our final Pokemon is going to be Gengar. It's especially powerful in the Battle Tower given its high speed and high special attack stat, which is why we're maximizing both of those stats with a Timid Nature and throwing the last EVs into our HP. Our item is a Focus Sash, our ability is Curse Body, and this guy's typically just going to go ahead and set up a Nasty Plot and click either Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, or Dazzling Gleam and sweep through the entire team. It's a very nice lead, and honestly, I've been using it in my own personal runs lately. With the singles team all explained, I'm going to throw it back to Philly. Thank you very much, Moxie, for explaining it. I hope you guys took some notes down or screenshots. As I mentioned before, there are a total of 49 mandatory battles in order to unlock the Masters battles. And they are broken down into seven sets, and each of the seven sets have seven trainers in each one. Progressively, you will notice as you fight throughout all of them that the Pokemon start to get harder, and some of the meme strats that these trainers have start to become more apparent. Because you have to beat 49 battles in a row, if you mess up on one, you're going to have to start all over again and not be able to even participate in the master's battle. A very helpful reference exists on the internet known as Cerebi.net, and they're gonna have this page, which I will link down in the description below, so you guys can click on that whenever you need it, where you can literally select the trainer that you're battling. So for example, let's say I was going to be fighting someone named Pokemon Ranger Bradley. I then can go to this list on the left under singles and look for Bradley right here. So it says Bradley Pokemon Ranger. You click on that and it's going to give me Bradley's possible teams that he can have. The moment I see one of the teams he has, I can hone in on it. For example, we got Licky Licky, Vileplume, and Absol. You go look at the screen right now on this battle. The first Pokemon he throws out is Licky Licky. And now I have to be aware that this Licky Licky has Belly Drum, Rest, Explosion, and Earthquake and holds the Chesto Berry. It also shows me where all the EV training values have gone in. This can really help you identify if you can outspeed a certain Pokemon, if you're slower than them, and what moves to use before engaging with them. And it puts you at quite an advantage for you to get your battle points. The final bit of information I want you guys to be aware of is that on the 21st battle and on the 49th battle, you will be encountering a boss battle with your rival's dad named Palmer. Now, Palmer is going to be a little bit harder than the other trainers within this tower. You'll get used to fighting him on the 21st battle, but he has Milotic, Dragonite, and Viper, which are pretty scary teams to deal with. And you can see all the moves they have. You can see all the abilities they have. You can also access this information on Cerebi for the 21st battle. But you have to plan out your battle or what's going to happen because Milotic, Dragonite, or Viper can be thrown out in different orders. It's not always going to be Milotic first. So be prepared for that. After you get past the 21st battle, you're gonna to start to notice the difficulty increase of the floors as now the trainers you fight will have more evolved Pokemon 
causing you to have to do different strategies than just simply attacking them and knocking them out. When you reach the 49th battle, you're going to be dealing with Palmer again, except this dude now has legendary Pokemon, as you can see on this list. He's literally got a Regigigas, Cresselia, and Heatran. I don't know when he decided to go out and catch these Pokemon, because I'm pretty sure I caught them. You should check out my guides on how to catch all three of these, by the way. And you can see all the moves these legendary Pokemon have. So you don't have to make the mistake of maybe having a Garchomp and doing an Earth Pick on Cresselia. With that being said, you guys now have all the basic information and tools you need for the Battle Tower. So from the team that Moxie suggested, I lead with Gengar. So I put Gengar first, followed by Azumarill, and then Garchomp. The reason why is because Gengar's Focus Sash will allow him to survive any crazy hits, but most likely Gengar will outspeed any Pokemon I encounter, which will allow me to get a nasty plot off, which will increase my special attack, and then basically take down the whole entire enemy's team. If for some reason the Gengar fails, I then have my Azumarill, who can belly drum and then do some massive damage. Followed by that, if I have a situation where I need to throw in Garchomp to clean up, Garchomp will be thrown in with its Choice Scarf so it can clean up any single Pokemon that I need it to with a specific move. This team does work. If it doesn't work for you, it's probably because you haven't gotten used to it. When I first started with this, I lost a couple of times, but after a lot of practice, and getting used to how the trainers work, you will pass this battle tower. My wife is not a big fan of Pokemon battling, and she also beat the battle tower. So you guys have no excuse, as she barely plays any Pokemon. All right, so I'm gonna try to give you guys a live example right now, as I'm playing it right now. And we are fighting up against Picnic Nicole. The first Pokemon she throws out is Badoo. And I'm coming out with my Gengar. Now, basically what I do is, if I have a super effective move against a first evolution Pokemon, I'm going to go ahead and use it. In this case, right now, I have nothing super effective. And I know Badoo cannot one-shot my Gengar or bring it close to it. So what I will do with Gengar is go for a Nasty Plot, which will raise a special attack. It'll do a Giga Drain, try to do some work here. Not too much. If I have the opportunity to do another Nasty Plot, sometimes you don't need to, but I like being extra. In this case, I will try to do it again. Gengar avoided Stun Spore. That could have been bad for me. So I'm going to go ahead now and just hit it with Sludge Bomb because that's Gengar's most powerful attack next to Shadow Ball. Sludge Bomb is 90 damage times the stab damage times the amount of special attack it has and it should just wipe a whole entire enemy team clean completely. Next up is Growlithe coming out with Intimidate. It's not going to be a problem for me. Literally just going to Sludge Bomb it. I do have animations turned off and if you do have it turned on, you're going to start to notice it's going to go very slow if you keep animations on. So turning animations off will definitely make this go very fast. And then we have a Bidoof over here. I'm just going to Sludge Bomb it and it's done. Gengar can literally solo battle almost every single Pokemon up to the first boss fight. And in some cases, depending on how that boss fight works out, Gengar can probably destroy that boss as well. All right, so here it is. We're at battle 21. So I figured we show you this instead of walking you through every single random battle along the way. So this is when you first encounter Palmer. This is going to be your 21st battle. And it's, it's shocking. I, I wasn't expecting Palmer when I first came in here right away. But here's Palmer. And we're going to see what exactly he lead, leads out with. And I'm going to kind of walk you through what happens here. So he leads out with the worst one, Milotic. And what I'm doing with Gengar here is probably going to Nasty Plot first. Because there's probably no way I'm going to do damage to this. So I start immediately with a Nasty Plot, raising my attack. They use Hypnosis, but I managed to dodge it. After that point, once I get the Nasty Plot off, it's all about sludge bombing. So I go ahead and take out my Lodic. Very clean and simple. Gengar's special attack is so high, and with the build it has, it's, it's so fast and amazing. Next, we have Rhyperior coming out here. So I'm going to go ahead, not use sludge bomb here, because it's not effective since, you know, it's not effective against ground. So we go ahead and I just use Shadow Ball here, and you can see it's literally one shot to the Rhyperior knocking it down. Now, the next scary Pokemon that comes out of this mix is Dragonite. So, I decide to use Dazzling Gleam, since it is a fairy move, and you can use it. Now, you can see Dragonite eats the first one, uses Dragon Rush on me, brings me down to 1 HP, but thanks to Gengar's Focus Sash, I have 1 HP, and he also loses that move with the Cursed Body. And then, that's it. Use another Dazzling Gleam, Dragonite's done, and... Gengar literally just soloed this fight. All right, so here's a couple more battles after we beat Dragonite. As you can see, I'm using Gengar here. And then when I don't need Gengar, I throw out other Pokemon like Garchomp just to take things out. So this is going to be a little bit of a quickie uh, going through some of these fights here. Just to give an example of when I use the other Pokemon 
when it's necessary. It's it's simply just rinse and repeat. Electabuzz comes out, Gengar comes in, Thunder Wave paralyzes me, which makes me a lot slower here. If I'm not able to take out the Pokemon completely and they're able to take me out, for example, I, I faint, I'm going to throw out my Guard Chop, use a Poison Attack, take out this Grodal. Simple stuff like that. And we're going to really just make our way all the way to the 49th battle. So let's go ahead, skip that, since you guys kind of understand what you have to do. If you need any other help, just go back to the part where Moxie explains the whole entire singles battle and the setups and what's important about it. Okay, so here we are, the 49th battle. And believe me, I was extremely nervous knowing that Palmer has legendary Pokemon here. Extremely nervous. But luckily, I see Reggie Gigas come out first. And that was what I really wanted to happen during this fight. Now, Reggie Gigas has something called slow start. So I know it's going to be moving a lot slower than my Gengar. So I go ahead, start off with a nasty plot, increasing my special attack. He uses Stone Edge, which is not going to be enough to take me out. Cursed Body kicks in, so that means he cannot use Stone Edge anymore, which leaves the only other move it can use on me, which is the Ice Punch. So it goes ahead, and I know there's not going to be an Ice Punch. That's why I did a Nasty Plot again the second time. And now at this point, I am literally going to nuke this whole entire team with Sludge Bombs, which is it's disgusting knowing that I just did a Nasty Plot twice. So Heatran comes in. Yes, it seems scary. These are legendary Pokemon. But let me tell you about the legendary Pokemon known as Gengar, who can absolutely destroy Pokemon like this. So I go ahead here, and I'm going to not use Sludge Bomb because it's not effective. So just pop a Shadow Ball, and it should do the job. There it goes. Heatran down. Literally just nuked a second legendary Pokemon. Then he sends out Cresselia. At this point, I'm really not nervous at all because Cresselia is a psychic type. And, you know, Gengar is a ghost type. And I don't got to worry about this. A Shadow Ball will easily take it out. And just like that, that simple, I cleared out the 49th battle of the Battle Tower, which lets me unlock the Master's Battles. How sick is that? And Palmer gives you a little message afterwards telling you how it brings him back to the days of long ago. I went to the lake with your father, and I don't know who my father is because no one knows who their father is in these Pokemon games. Hey, but you meet everyone else's dads, and I don't understand that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, we hold a lot of promise. We destroy him, we beat him, we unlock Masters. So congratulations if you guys do manage to do that. Gengar is the way. Trust me, he is the way. Now, once you make it into Masters, every seventh battle is basically going to be a boss fight. From gym leaders to Cynthia, it's insane. But I'm not going to be walking you through all those fights because now you have the tools to do it on your own. You can go and reference the Cerebi website to see the teams and the attacks they have. And you can use the Pokemon you want from this team suggestion in any way you desire. In fact, it doesn't have to be exactly what we have in this video. You can tweak them up yourselves. But now let's talk about doubles. I'm going to bring back my boy Moxie to explain the double strategy team. Okay guys, I'm back to explain the doubles team. Now because it's a doubles team, there are two Pokemon on the field, of course, so it's going to take a little bit more time to explain how the team functions. This team has a Garchomp, Zapdos, Pelipper, Ludicolo, Heatran, and Cresselia on it. Like before, we only have to bring a few Pokemon out of the six to every single attempt at the Battle Tower, so keep these in mind. If you bring the Garchomp, you're definitely going to want to bring the Zapdos with it, and if you bring the Pelipper or Ludicolo, make sure you bring the other one with it. They don't really work without each other, since Ludicolo heavily relies on rain for its damage output and speed, but we'll get into that in a minute. Let's explain the Garchomp. This Garchomp is very similar to our single set. However, we're running a Jolly Choice Scarf with Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Rock Slide, and Poison Jab, and Rough Skin as our ability, of course. What we're going to want to do is lead off with this thing next to a Zapdos. Now, Zapdos and Garchomp have very good synergy with a combo you might have heard of called Disquake. What we're going to do is click Earthquake next to our Zapdos, experiencing absolutely no downsides. Now, the Zapdos being a flying and electric type is completely immune to the Earthquake, and Garchomp being a ground type is completely immune to the Zapdos' electric moves. Because of that, what we're running is a Zap Plate set with max speed, max special attack, a modest nature, 4 HP, and discharge, protect, thunder, and roost with the ability static. The Zap Plate boosted discharge will be doing a significant amount of damage to everything on the field except for the Garchomp. 
thus Disquake. Go ahead and click Earthquake and Discharge on the field as much as you want, you're only going to experience benefits. It's a very powerful combo and it's very fun to use. We're also running Thunder on this set because if you decide to bring the Pelipper with you, you're going to have a 100% accurate Thunder that is Zap Plate boosted, meaning that Thunder, instead of having 110 base power, will actually be 132 base power before accounting for the same type attack bonus. Roost is just there to make sure you can get a little bit of recovery when you need it, and Protect is there because in doubles, it's a pretty reliable move. Something to note is Zapdos is a version exclusive, so if you're not able to get your hands on it, there is a slightly less powerful but more available Pokemon that we can use instead. It's going to be a Choice Specs Rotom Wash with Discharge, Volt Switch, Dark Pulse, and Hydro Pump. We'll be running a max speed, max special attack set with 4 HP and a modest nature. Like I said, it isn't quite as strong, but if you're struggling to get your hands on a Zapdos because of the nature of your game, you can go ahead and go for the Rotom instead. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Our next Pokemon is going to be our Drizzle Pelipper with a Focus Sash, Hurricane Scald, Protect, and Tailwind, 4 HP, max special attack, max speed, and this guy is going to be our speed control, but also our rain setter. Its partner in crime is going to be Ludicolo. You'll never see these guys apart. The Ludicolo will be running Life Orb, Swift Swim, Fake Out, Ice Beam, Energy Ball, and Scald with max speed, max special attack, and a modest nature. This guy under rain not only gets a 50% boost to his Scald, but it also gets double speed because of that Swift Swim ability. And when you combo that with a Life Orb, it's got mad damage output. And between Pelipper and Ludicolo, they have pretty insane coverage. You'll be able to deal with a lot of things in the field and just deal insane damage. Pelipper, also to note, is another switch in that you can have next to Garchomp. If you decide to click Garchomp's Earthquake, you're locked into it for a while because of the Choice Scarf, so Pelipper is a pretty reliable Pokemon to have next to it. Next up on the team is going to be Heatran. We're going to be running a Shookaberry with Flash Fire, Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Protect, and Earth Power. It's the exact same spread as our single set, however, we're going to go ahead and use Protect over Dark Pulse, since we'd rather have the option to Protect next to our Garchomp's Earthquake than have the Dark type coverage. On top of that, our Shookaberry is actually going to allow us to take a single Earthquake from our Garchomp, only taking roughly 70% damage even though it's a times 4 effective hit, so if you end up having to Earthquake your Heatran, you'll be safe at least once. Our final Pokemon is actually going to be a pretty decent partner for the Heatran. This is a Calm Mind Cresselia. It'll be able to use Trick Room to reverse the speed tiers, allowing Heatran to move first, but you won't want to click this thing if you have a Switch Swim Ludicolo on the field, or even really any other Pokemon, given that every other Pokemon on our team has a relatively high speed stat. However, if you want to mix things up and go slow, Cresselli is the Pokemon for you. We're going to be running Leftovers, Calm Mind, Psychic, Moonlight, Trick Room with max HP, max defense, 4 special defense, 0 speed IVs, and a relaxed nature. This guy is going to be setting up Calm Minds, getting Leftovers Recovery along with Moonlight Recovery, and just clicking Psychic to annihilate things after you've set up. On top of that, it's also a levitating Pokemon, which gives us three whole Pokemon that don't really mind a Garchomp Earthquake. This Pokemon you'll typically want to run next to the Heatran, however, you can bring it to any other composition, granted you've gotten the right pairs, whether it be Garchomp Zapdos or Pelipper Ludicolo, it's pretty good next to all of them. With the doubles team explained, I'm going to throw it back to Philly. Thank you very much, Moxie, for that very detailed explanation on double battles, and I'm going to take exactly what you said. So, guys, I'm going to pick Garchomp as my first Pokemon, Zapdos as my second one, I'm going to do Pelipper as a third, and Ludicolo as my fourth. And as Moxie mentioned, if you don't have Zapdos, go ahead and grab a Rotom Wash. This is basically what I did to beat all 49 battles on doubles. Now, doubles is way easier than singles. You don't have any boss battles and I didn't notice any really difficult challenges. My only issue with doubles battles is that it takes so long to do, even with the animations off. It just, it's the worst. So if you're trying to do this in one sitting, it's going to take you five to six hours. A much easier way of doing it where you don't stress yourself out and lose five to six hours would be to just do seven battles, go to work, come back after work, do another seven battles, just basically kind of figure out how you're inserting those seven battles into your day until you reach 49. But very simple fights, nothing too complicated, and nothing very difficult. Okay, so here's an example of a doubles battle that I'm doing right now as I'm recording this video. So he's going to throw out Shuppet and Trico. And as Moxie mentioned, the strategy here is to use this Quake. So Zapdos electric moves will not affect Garchomp, and Garchomp's Earthquake won't affect Zapdos. So what I'm going to do is literally Earthquake with Garchomp and I'm going to discharge the field with Zapdos. So let's see what happens. Doesn't affect Zapdos. And as you can see, Shuppet and Trico are down. That Trico has a Focus Sash, but 
Zapdos is going to discharge it and uh, destroy it. There it is. And just like that, right? Simple, clean, easy. It's done. I love this. Next Pokemon out are Slowpoke and Chinchow. All right. We're going to do the same thing back to back. Going to use my Earthquake on Slowpoke. And I'm going to discharge on Chinchow and Slowpoke. Here we go. So it says again, doesn't affect Zapdos. You can see Chinchow is literally already dead. Slowpoke didn't go down all the way, but I don't got to worry about that because Zapdos is literally going to cover me. And it looks like the Slowpoke has a Citrus Berry. And Zapdos cleans up. And that's how you do it, guys. Literally run it through. And when your Zapdos or Garchomp are in a pinch and they don't really work out, you can switch in the Pelipper with the Zapdos to cause the rain to make it very easy to one shot with Thunder Attacks. Or you can have the Ludicolo and the Pelipper to do amazing things as Moxie has mentioned. If you need assistance again with that, just go back in the video and watch what Moxie said. And with that being said, congratulations, guys. You now know everything you really need to know about the Battle Tower. You can make your ways easily to Battle 49, understand all the trainers that you're going to be facing, and in fact, once you do that, now you have the tools and the knowledge to even do the master battles and rack up that sweet battle points that you can buy things with. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and please check out Moxie Boosted. His link is down in the description below. He helped so much with this video, and I'm sure it's going to help out a lot of you guys. So if you're into competitive battling, go ahead and check him out. Guys, thank you again for all the love on the videos. I will see you guys in the next one. This is Philly Beats You, and I'm out.